We're back. Maybe so, the sigh. The sigh? This isn't really a sigh talk. This is more information. Yeah. Sigh. All these talks are always based off of information. True. Well, what has it been? About a week? Been about a week. Yeah, about a week, about a week, about a week. And then a lot of information has been taken in. Um, segue today, uh, there happened to be another explosion to take off. In Baghdad, yeah, you heard that little smirk, like hmm hmm hmm, but then that was more or less a smirk of a, a annoyance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was another bomb to go off in Baghdad, in Iraq, you know, um, and it killed quite a few people, mainly Muslim people, um, for this death cult, for this destructive religious cult that's going on around this world right now. And, um, yeah, I guess we're going to have a discussion about, uh, um, some more of the fundamentals or the base nature of Islam and some of the concepts that probably need to be understand by, um, us, us people here over in the West. Yeah. We need to understand some of these core concepts of what makes this belief system of what it is. And there happens to be some that are pretty good pretty good yeah for sure i think there's actually a uh almost uh it's done out of some respect as well because there's a lot of good lessons to be taken from them good lessons to be taken from what from what we're about to discuss the five pillars oh yeah yeah well first off uh, i don't know I'm, I'm thinking about this this is going to be the new start or the way that um maybe i might start off all of these conversations that we have by actually having an anchor or a focus and then the anchor and the focus is going to be um the reading of a quote by someone <laughs> that i find inspirational it's an inspiration yeah. yeah yeah so this is going to be the anchor and in the mind frame that i would like for us to establish and set off right and it's going to be my marcus marcus Aurelius, right a badass stoic. Marcus Aurelius. Yeah. I like to say Aurelius. Okay. Yeah. But you say it again. Say it again. Marcus. Marcus Aurelius. Yeah. Marcus Aurelius. Yeah. Marcus <laughs> Aurelius. Yeah. But this is what uh, my my good buddy, my good digital mentor. I said digital because he's fucking dead. Right. But my good digital mentor, Marcus, <laughs> used to rock out like this. This is this is what he said. This was one of his um statements that he made in his daily journal or in his uh, meditations he said you have power over your mind not outside events realize this and you will find strength yeah i know a lot of people who paid a lot of money to go to therapists <laughs> to become a stoic pretty much mm -hmm. to realize that they have power mm -hmm. right they have the power over their mind but they don't have any power over outside events. <laughs> Why'd you just make that face like that? Because that's that's true, and it's empowering to know that you no one can uh, can can affect your own thoughts. That's the one thing you have absolute power on. Um, but then we're also trying to. Um, Use outside events as a uh, motivation for uh, the change that we're talking about, and for uh, understanding and in uh, information. Hmm, that's what we use outside events for: understanding and information. Yeah, that makes sense. Spot on, spot on. All right. So now that we have an anchor, we have an anchor that that we have the power over our mind right we you know you have power over your mind i have power over mine whoever's listening to this they have power over their mind they don't have any power over anything external right so we're not in control of anything external outside of our mind mm -hmm. right you know so i don't control the weather i don't control the way that the waves come in right i don't control how the lights are going to turn green or yellow or red or anything like that. I am not in control of anything like that, right? But if I realize this, <laughs> I'm going to be 
a powerful mofo, mm -hmm. right? That's our anchor. Our anchor is this, is that we have power over our mind, right? And then with that, now we're getting ready to roll into our next discussion about Islam in the five pillars, right? So I'm gonna let you set this one off because you, <laughs> you, you did some serious work, right? You did some serious work and, and, um, I'm learning. Yeah. 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 I guess the, the segue to power of our own mind is a little exercise I want to do. Um, what, or I was doing while I was learning and I challenged people to do, and it's uh, a way of adopting these five pillars into your own life. So you have power in your own mind about how you want to adopt ideologies. Um, and you, you can borrow stuff. That's the great thing about ideas is that you don't have to subscribe to a religion to take something that you find inspirational or something good about it and run with it and use it to uh, to, to use it in the way you would to, to create the life that you want to live. So I guess that's my segue from... From our anchor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. So I was reading a lot. Um, uh, scouring the, the web. Not not too far away from Wikipedia. I admit. Um, but then I came across also a website. Uh, and a, a YouTube uh, series by Nabil Qureshi. Called Islam 101. And he's on Creed26.com. So I'm listening to him talk. And I'm also marrying uh, his uh, very straightforward ex explanations with what I've been reading about on the five pillars of Islam. So to start off, uh, Islam is a... Wait, wait, wait. What? The five pillars? Mm -hmm. The five pillars of Islam. Mm -hmm. So Islam is almost like a house. You can say it. I mean, these are so important they're ex that they're called pillars. Like oh, without yeah. them or without without them, yes, the ideology would fall. Okay. They're, so these they're are, considered that. Um, yeah. And these are the things pertinent. that hold it up. Yes. Right. These they're are the things that. They're fundamental. Yeah. They maintain mm -hmm. Islam. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's explained that Islam is a, is a duty-based ideology, meaning that it's... You have to live your life according to these certain ideas, and there are a lot of duties that you perform yeah. to adhere to these ideas. So when you say duty based, does that just mean things you have to, like jobs? You have to do jobs. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. In which you incorporate these duties that are ba that are are basically living your life in as far as Islam is concerned, like Muhammad. Muhammad okay. is the paradigm. Okay. Okay, so you perform these duties to, as best as your ability, emulate Muhammad. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Muhammad is the... Rituals are very important. Yeah. So Muhammad is the... He's the template. Yes. So Muhammad's the template that all Muslims... Yes. Live by. Yes. Got it. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the five pillars... Uh, so the very, very first and, and probably the most important is called the Shahada, and that's the central proclamation. And it's the, uh, basically Allah is God, the one and only God, and, and uh, Muhammad is his prophet. Um, even if you say these, these words and actually mean them, uh, you are a Muslim. That's all it takes. That is only thing uh, uh, necessary and sufficient to become a Muslim is okay, to so believe you don't, those words. You don't have to be, you don't have to have your head dipped in water. You don't have to do anything except believe those words. Baptized or, or anything like that. That's so, it. so the moment that you say Muhammad, no, no, not Muhammad, but Allah. Allah. Allah is the one. And only God. And only God, right? You mm -hmm. say, yo, you're base, right? That's it. You say, Allah, you're the shit. That's you, it. Yeah, yeah, you're base. Mm -hmm. And then you become mm -hmm. Muslim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that's pretty easy. That's okay. straightforward. So that's the first one, the first pillar. Yeah. That's, it, that's the central proclamation. That's yeah. what we discussed as faith. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, faith. We're going to try to 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 extend these ideas into um, ide ideologies that are both in other religions as well as non-secular ideas. Right? Whoa, I didn't do any work 
for that. But <laughs> okay, we'll yeah. All right, go. I'm. I'm. I'll rock out with this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so the second one is the salat, and that is the the five prayers. So, like I said, it's a very uh, duty driven ideology with ritual, and there are five prayers to be done uh, every day. Um, so you got to pray five times. You got to pray five times a day. Right. Adan is the call to prayer. It's usually how people wake up in the morning. It's also the end of the work day. Um, sometimes people wake up in the middle of the night to do their fifth prayer. Um, and Fridays are very sacred, and it's a day off uh, for prayer as well. Okay, so you got to pray five times a day. You do, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So first, you got to say, yo, Allah. And it's not just, like, dear Allah. How are you doing today? I wish I get an A on this test. It's not the the kind of prayer that is necessarily um, uh, how you would think of maybe the Christian type of prayer. It's it's uh, it, there are uh, specific things that you say, and there's a, it's a ritual. It's more ritualized. Oh, so it's that. a templated. It's, it's another templated yes. yeah. event that you have to do. Yes. Okay. So first. In order for you to do it. So I'm, I'm going to probably keep going over this mm. multiple times as I close my eyes and then I roll them as I scratch my face. What you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the first thing in order for you to to become Muslim, the fa- the first one is that you have to accept Allah as the one and only. That, that's the central proclamation. Yeah. That's yes. the first one, right? So this is your key. Yes. Right. And then after that, then you have to pray. Yes. And then you pray five times a day. Yes. Right? And then these prayers are fixed. So as far as fixed, I understand. And, you have and, fixed prayers on, on like in the morning. I don't know if they're like, I, I don't think that this is the, the, the prayer you say first or this is the prayer you say fifth. Um, mm. But I know that it's structured. Okay. So there is a structure meaning about like the time period that you do it throughout the day. The prayers are structured. So what you so. say is it's structured. not. It's not like free flow, like ah, I like, got you. I like got you. like the Christian prayers where people just mm-hmm. kind of talking about yeah, yeah, whatever's pertinent in their life at the time. Yeah. Okay. Boom. Um, okay. okay. So uh, we got two down. Okay. The third is zakat, and that is uh, charity, alms, basically giving uh, to your community, giving to uh, people that are in need. Mm. And that's considered a very necessary duty. Mm. The fourth is fasting, and that is uh, exemplary or uh, exemplified in the one month of Ramadan, where you have the sunrise to sunset. You're not to take in anything. What? We're in Ramadan right now. Yep. So nothing by mouth. Your your NPO, <laughs> basically no no food or liquid from sun up to sun down. Yeah, you just said a term. NPO. And, yeah. Nothing. Per oral. Yeah, it's, it's nothing used per in the medical, oral. It's a Latinization of yeah. nothing in the mouth. Don't put shit in your mouth. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, there are allowances for the sick and traveling people um, that they can make up for it later. <laughs> um, so there's supposed to be a little bit of flexibility there for maybe people that can adhere to that. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah. Um, and then the fifth is the Hajj, and that's the pilgrimage to Mecca. Hmm. It's, um, this is something that people maybe do once in their life. It happens once a year. Um, and people come from all over to do this very sacred set of ritual behaviors, one of which is like circling the Kaaba, which is this black stone. Um, several times there's, I guess, what is it? The number, is it nine or seven? Seven. Seven. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's something to do with seven. Um, yeah. There's other, you throw seven stones at the devil. There's, there's several. Seven there, laps. Seven laps, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah seven laps. But you know what's only you know what's pretty cool too? Hmm. You know why seven's a pertinent number to us? Why? Seven holes in our face. In our face. Yep. Yeah, you mentioned that. Yep, I always do. I'm always gonna mention it, that right? That's interesting. Yeah, you got seven holes in your face. You got your eyes, you got your nose, you got your mouth, and you got your fucking ears. <laughs> right? You know, it's like why are we Hopefully always you don't have it yeah, anymore or any yeah. less? <laughs> why are we always <laughs> choosing seven? <laughs> yeah. You know, well, yeah, that's probably like the first areas that you start looking at in the mirror. And you're like, one, well, when you develop the word one and two <laughs> and three, you're like, there's things right there and there's like seven of them. Yeah. It's all from your face. Okay. Yeah. But keep going. So those are the five pillars. Okay. Okay. And so then there's 
there's an unofficial sixth pillar, which is very controversial, and that is the uh, the the pillar of jihad. Basically, this is what's considered the duty to enjoy enjoin good and forbid evil. The duty to enjoin good and forbid evil. Right. The duty to enjoy good that and is, forbid evil. That is one of the, the definitions of jihad. That's jihad. One of the of okay. Her, probably a kind they got of kinder version. Yeah. Of um, this is uh, the traditionalists would say, no way in hell is there a six pillar because we don't change. We're purists. We don't change. Wait, wait, wait. A traditionalist would say hell. No. Would they say there's no way in no, hell? I'm speaking. Oh, that okay. was me. Yeah, yeah. That I'm was just all fucking, me. Just fucking around. So yeah. traditionalists would say there's no six. Uh, a yeah. pillar because that would be going You'd be like, to- Allah Akbar, there's no six. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is more of a Shia belief, not a Sunni. Oh, okay. six, six, six pillars would be Shia. More of a Shia belief. More of a Shia. A Sunni would be more traditional and say no. Okay. We believe that jihadism is, 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 is an important a component, but it wouldn't be considered a six pillar because then you're altering. It's not part of the your, foundation. Yeah, you're altering uh, uh, the foundation that should that yeah. needs to stay pure. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's fixed. Um, incidentally, Shia Islam can have ten practices or ten pillars that contain the five that we just talked about, plus twenty uh, percent tax or tithe. Okay, Jihad pause, is, pause, 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 yeah. pause, pause. So we're talking about Islam. Mm-hmm. In order for us to understand Islamism, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, but in order for us to understand Islam, right, mm-hmm. we also have to understand that there's two different um, paths um, within this, right? One right. of them will be Sunni, right, and one of them will be Shia, right? Okay, so the base way that I understand this, right, the Sunni are the majority of all Muslims, Correct. right? The majority of all Muslims in the world are Sunni, Correct. right, and the minority are Shia. So if you really want to think about it, um, uh, Saudi Arabia is Sunni, right? They're, they're a Sunni majority place, right? In Iraq, no, not Iraq, but Iran is Shia, right? Their majority, Shia. Are you sure? Yeah, okay. I'm pretty positive, right? Because I've been Googling this shit. Because <laughs> it's still an area of confusion for me. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's here's the best way that I was able to understand Sunni mm-hmm. versus Shia. Mm-hmm. And it, it it all boils down to um, the father-in-law mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and the son-in-law, right? Yeah, the son-in-law, right? So everyone who thought that the, the caliph or the, the first caliph... Um, We're talking about after Muhammad. Yeah, right? yeah, this yeah. Is, is it gonna, after? Did yes, he die? It's, okay. It's going to yeah. be like, who, who was yeah. going to be in charge after Muhammad? Yeah, or no, not who was going to be charged. I thought it was just who was the first. Yeah, who was the first, you know, caliph. Okay. Right. And then you had the majority of the people that believed that it was the, the father-in-law, mm-hmm. right? Which everybody who believes that the father-in-law was the first caliph, mm-hmm. right? They are all Sunni, right? Which happened to be about, mm, on average, according to the internet, is 85 to 90% of all Muslims are Sunni, right? right? And they all happen to believe that the father-in-law was the first caliph, right? right? And, you know... 10 to 15 percent are the Shia, right? And they happen to believe that the son in law, right? So, you know, so that's the only difference between the Sunni and the Shia. But it's like, caused, caused quite a bit of divide. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, right? I said, so if you're from the West and you wonder and you want to comprehend um, the Sunni Shia divide, the best way that I think that we should be able to do that is to understand the Hatfields and the McCoys, Mm -hmm. right? You know, because the Hatfields and the McCoys were two groups, two crews, you know, two friends at one time, right? And then they were divided over um, a disagreement, right? right? A disagreement and that shit was war for a very bit. That was, that was, that's basically America's, you know, um, biggest, rivalry you know i mean there was a lot of people that died from the hatfields and the mccoys right (laughs) they made a good parallel yeah Yeah. they we we made i say we right we made cartoons Mm -hmm. in looney tunes based off of the hatfields and the mccoys right Mm -hmm. you can see the hatfields and the mccoys were were based off of um these dudes with some hats and long beards you know they look like hipsters nowadays you know but the hatfields (laughs) and the mccoys you know one had a red beard and one had a black beard these were the two the two people that were battling it out 
over something that was quite trivial. Mm -hmm. And this is what we have when we think about the Sunni and the Shia. At least that's how I break it. Well, down. What was that uh, article where we read where they were trying to tell, you know, checkpoints to see if you were Shia or Sunni mm. and they asked how you pray. And some people would pray with their arms crossed and the other group would pay with their hands. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The Sunni, palms up and yeah. then, and then yeah. that could mean death. Yeah. At a checkpoint. Based yeah, yeah. On... yeah. Today's time. <laughs> right. Yeah. During today's time. Right. You can be killed at certain checkpoints if you if you look like you are Shia, right? And that and they can tell that if you're Shia, if they run you through a test or they run you through some sort of scheme. Interrogation of yeah. some sort. Yeah. yeah. And if you, what is it? Cross your arms, right? Mm -hmm. If you cross your arms over your waist, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. And you, you just look like you're doing the dance, right? <laughs> then that means that, oh yeah, you're you Shia. You pray different than we yeah, do. You're Shia. Even so, though you're praying from the same book. Right. You know, that means that you're not from one of us. five pillars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're tapping out. So that's what we have, right? So yeah. from the five pillars, right, we have a whole belief system. And the belief system is called Islam, right? right? Which is an Abrahamic religion, right? right. It, it's one of the three, right? And it's also the youngest of the three Abrahamic religions, right? right? So since it's the youngest, it also thinks it's it's the most accurate, <laughs> right? Of the three, because it's the it's the new kid on the block. And it's saying, hey, big bro. Hey, big sis. Well, they're all big brothers, well, right? The Quran yeah. does state that the Muslim faith is superior and that Muslims are superior to everyone. Eh, well, yeah. All young people think that they're the best, right? <laughs> yeah. True. All young people think that they're the best relative to the adults. It's like, yo, I know more than you know. <laughs> and then you look at the little young person and you're like, okay, young person. <sighs> I've been around the block a few times. I've done what you've done. You still, you know, you still have some growing up that you need to do, <laughs> right? This is, you know, and this this is like no disrespect, mm -hmm. but yet maybe it is, right? You know, um, but what what it what it's saying is that the youngest kid on the block right now is Islam mm -hmm. when it comes to the Abrahamic religions, mm -hmm. right? And because they're the youngest, they're also throwing the the most violent temper tantrum. Mm -hmm. that um we can come around right and mm -hmm. yeah it just went it went dark but then it's not going to go dark because i think that these five pillars that you're talking about mm -hmm. they are a good foundation these are great ideas yeah and they're they're echoed in other religions and other well yeah they're they're derivatives from ideas ideologies yeah these are derivatives from the the hebrew mm -hmm. belief system mm -hmm. right you know because i had to i had to distill it down to because I can't read Arabic, and you were saying those words pretty, pretty, pretty good. I can't even pronounce them. <laughs> right? <laughs> what was the first one? I don't even want to say it. Shahada. Shahada. Right? Yeah. So, so Shahada. Right? All these Arabic terms. I had to break them down to English. Okay. Right? And then I got the five pillars, just like you. Right? Mm -hmm. But then I just distilled it down, so then that way, it parallels the other ones. Right. You right. know, the first one is faith. Right. Second one is prayer. Mm -hmm. Third one is giving. Mm -hmm. Fourth one <laughs> is fasting. fasting. And then the fifth one is pilgrimage. Right. Correct. Yeah. So we got faith, mm -hmm. prayer, <sighs> giving, fasting, pilgrimage. Yeah. Right. Faith, prayer, giving, fasting, pilgrimage. Those don't really sound like bad words. No. Yeah. Those sound like, okay, they're pretty benign words when you think about it. Right, because it's, they can do a lot of great things. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, I guess it's the interpretation of faith. Right, it's the interpretation of prayer, of giving, fasting. I don't think you can. In, well, yeah, you can still interpret that in, in many different ways, mm -hmm. and then of pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what did you discover on any of these as you were like researching and? And reading about the five pillars, you know, besides all the the cool things that you were saying before. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think those things are inherently just um, like wonderful parts of the ideology. And it's not, those aren't the reasons why I think we're having the issues we're having today. Uh -huh. um, I think it comes more to that. Uh... Wait, 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 wait. Hmm? Wait, okay. So this is how I define faith. Mm -hmm. Right. I define faith 
um, based off of two definitions, right? I have the modern sense of how most people would use it, right? And then most people would say faith when they say, oh, you just have to have faith, mm -hmm. right? And when you go to church or when you're doing anything like that. So to have faith means that you have a strong belief in a supernatural power or powers that control mm -hmm. human destiny. Mm -hmm. That's the modern sense of faith. Mm -hmm. I prefer, <laughs> I would prefer to use the, the traditional root base word of faith, mm -hmm. right? Which would be, you know, fidere, Latin, mm -hmm. right? But let's just call it faith, right? So the, the root sense of faith means to trust. So you got to trust something. Like I have to have faith in you that I know that you're going to come over and you're going to record with me, mm -hmm. right? So I have to trust, mm -hmm. right, that you're going to do this, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then I'm like, yeah, all right, I don't trust you. Mm -hmm. How, like, this is what I, what, what I think is cool, you know, is that these five pillars have this concept in it right here where you have to trust something. Mm -hmm. But then how do you trust a supernatural entity? that you never, ever have experienced, right? You've never experienced a supernatural entity. I've, I know nobody that's ever experienced a supernatural entity, but then I know so many people that have this belief. They have a strong belief that there's something, they all say it, that's greater than them mm -hmm. that is directing their life. Mm -hmm. How How does that... Can you walk that? Uh, I can't. That, that, that yeah. question has been asked <laughs> for many, <laughs> many, many, many years. And yeah. I'm, I'm with more people than, than I can imagine. But I think that's that's the cornerstone of faith is when there is not any uh, logical evidence, yet you still believe. Mm. That's faith. Okay. Right? No evidence, but you believe. Mm -hmm. And you believe mainly because of oh. your life right whatever the circumstances are in your life sure I guess. yeah well i can deal with that yeah yeah as long as that faith there that belief in a supernatural entity or a power mm -hmm. isn't destructive <laughs> i'm fine with that right yeah I'm fine. You can you can believe in in all the things that you want to as long as the supernatural entity does not tell you to do bad shit. Set and setting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Let's let's work on now. You know, so that was how I defined faith. Okay. All right. I still see the shahada as being I don't it's faith, but it's it's that central proclamation of the entire uh, reason for the ideology. Like, if you don't have that one pillar, that's like the, the, the main pillar, right? If yeah. you don't have that, the other ones don't matter. Yeah, but then the main pillar within mm -hmm. their proclamation, mm -hmm. right, within mm -hmm. their rule-based system within mm -hmm. the Shahada is that, that Allah, mm -hmm. right, is the one and only God. Correct. Right? wait a minute, now I'm thinking about who would they have that to compare to? How would they even know that there would be somebody else to compare it to? Well, How you did said they... that they were younger and they knew that there was a, Ju a Judeo-Christian God and yeah. uh, pantheistic gods of the Romans before then. Yeah. Um, so My brain is ticking on a whole nother, another path. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, oh yeah, well our crew is better than your crew. And if you say that, and if you say that... Um, well, that's... Yeah. <laughs> what? That's something that this guy who I'm watching his uh, YouTube videos, Qureshi, is saying is that part of the mindset of an, uh, of Islam is that Islam is superior to all other religions and all other ways of life. Wait, wait, wait. Rituals wait, 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 wait. are superior wait. and Muslims are superior. Wait, that's a very technically racist statement. That's what he said. Right, so if you claim that your group is superior to another group and he's saying it's oh the wait a minute wait 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 then i'm racist too right i'm so racist i'm just as racist as as those that declare that islam is superior sure it's ever because i think that the western culture or western civilization is the best 
culture, which means it's superior to all other cultures as far as when it comes to maximizing the well-being of people. Is that racist? Uh, yeah, because I'm going to say that the Western culture is better or superior mm -hmm. than the others, right? So even though you can't say that culture is a race, but then I sort of kind of get confused because I had this discussion with somebody this week because mm -hmm. they tried to say that um, um, you can't say something about Mexicans because that's racist. And then I was like, well, Mexican isn't a race. Right. To be Mexican, I've never heard of the Mexican race. Right. <laughs> so how can you be racist against Mexicans? You know, so so so, <laughs> so it's almost like that that same thing where it's like, yeah, I guess you can't really you can't really be racist to Western civilization because it's not a race mm -hmm. and you can't really be racist to islam or muslims because they're not a race okay so i think we just like maybe killed all I, social justice warriors argument right there about when you talk about islam and muslims islam is a religion and political system muslim are people mm, yeah pe muslims are the the people yes or i would call them the basic units that follow this belief system you can agree or disagree with an idea and yeah. that does not make you a good or bad person. You yeah. are agreeing or disagreeing with an idea. Yeah, yeah. But then being Muslim, you're not part of a specific race. No. Right? So you can you can talk no. about you I can, can talk be, about like this. Like I told you before, the only yeah. thing that it takes to be a Muslim is for you to declare. Is for you to declare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's but not race driven. No. It's, it's it's adhering to an idea, accepting an idea. Yeah. I understand that. But what I'm saying is Right, and this is something that I'm trying to clarify, like what you're trying to do, mm -hmm. is that there's a shitload of people out there mm -hmm. that believe that you are being racist. <laughs> they believe that you are being racist if you talk about groups of people. Like if you talk about Mexicans mm -hmm. and you talk about them in a specific way. Well, how are you talking about them? Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> I think they it depends say, on what you're saying. No, you can't be racist towards Mexicans, right? Just the same way as that you can't be racist towards Islam or people who are Muslims. Nah, you got to distinguish between the idea and the people. No, because because Mexican is just a culture or an ethnic group of people. So being right? a culturist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want to call it that, you know, it's all about culture, right? You know, but but you can be born in Mexico, right? Mm -hmm. In this little geographical region that they say that's Mexico, right? And then all of a sudden you become Mexican, right? But you can't. It's not a race. It's not how okay. we, we I, identify. Okay. So you can be okay. racist against a Mexican just the same way that you can't be racist against a Muslim. That's all I'm going with this one. Because there's a lot of people that say that you cannot talk about these things because you're being racist. I think that the, without using racist or, or culturalist or whatnot, it's are you saying something derogatory about people or are you disagreeing with an idea? And I think that's where it comes down to... Yeah, you shouldn't say things derogatory about people, but I I I disagree with plenty of ideas and I'm not going to feel bad about that. Mhm. Mm okay. I think yeah. that's where I would I would stand on that. Yeah. But then does that make you a racist if you disagree I don't know with what an it idea? Makes me. I don't really care at this point with those labels cuz that yeah. I just told you that's how I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but then whatever. you have a lot of people getting shut down in conversations mm -hmm. because if you make a statement regarding an idea then they would eventually defer to saying that you are a racist. Fine. Yeah. No, that's not fine. Because you're shutting no, down. No, I, I mean, it's not fine, but yeah. how am I to argue that? Ooh, what's that beat? Is that an alarm? No. Yeah, okay. Yeah, nah, I don't know. You can just... It, it's just one of those the things... the people that are going to do that aren't going to listen to my point of view anyway. Yeah. They're well, not that... going to let me have a normal discourse where we exchange ideas really together and try to understand each other's ideas so at that that point i don't yeah, well, call me what call me what you will yeah that's true it's like you just let them just discuss say well you call me what it is and then i'll define my terms because that's mm -hmm. why i'm pretty big on defining terms mm -hmm. and then you can just rock out from there right right but then with this discussion right here that we're having i'm gonna say that you can't be a racist right because you're talking about an idea. Talking about ideas yeah. here. And gotcha. I actually happen to respect these ideas. 
man, somebody needs to learn how to cook because their smoke detector is going off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on, what are you doing? <laughs> Fucking burning eggs right now. <laughs> Shit, how did you just burn some eggs? You know, beep, beep, beep. Okay, yeah, where were we going? Okay, so, so we had the faith and then we had the prayer, right? Did we define prayer? No, I didn't define the prayer. You discussed it, but now I would like to go through and define it the way that I do. Because the only way that I can understand these concepts is if I define these terms, mm -hmm. right? You know, so faith, we've already defined. Prayer, I got the two, the two definitions of prayer, right? I'm going to have the modern sense mm -hmm. and the, the traditional origin of where this word came from. Mm -hmm. So the modern sense of prayer, it means the act of communicating with a deity, this is how people in modern times would use it, is mm -hmm. that they feel that they are actually communicating, like on Facebook, mm -hmm. right? Or like on Twitter, or like on your Snapchat, or like on your um, SMS, or an email, or anything like this. That they feel that they are actually coming together and exchanging an idea with a deity. With a deity, mm -hmm. right? A deity. Mm -hmm. The people think that they're talking to a deity when they're praying. I believe so. Yeah. Got it. Right. So then the origin of this word, precare. I love Latin. Latin's just a fun, fun, fun language. But precare, right? Precare is the Latin term, the origin of where prayer comes from. And what it means is to beg. Is that like where to prostate oneself? Oneself? Like to... To... To prostate? That's 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 the wrong word. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? Um, when you're like, it's almost like the the act of begging where you're almost uh, prone. Anyway. Bowing down and yeah, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I've never actually looked that yeah. one up. Yeah. Yeah, but no, to prayer, or to mm -hmm. precare, mm -hmm. right? Which is where prayer comes from. Mm -hmm. Um, it means you're begging. Right. Right. You're begging or you're asking earnestly. Oh, prostrate. Yeah. That's what I meant. Oh, prostrate. <laughs> I said prostate. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole other issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yikes. And how is prayer used in the five pillars? And when you were saying, what is the term that they use? Well, it it's very as? ritualized. It's one of the duties that ah, you do. It's the five. It's one of right. the you So five you're asking. Times a day. Yeah. So what you're doing now in Islam, or any time that you're praying, mm -hmm. you're asking a deity mm -hmm. and you're asking a deity five times mm -hmm. five times a day for a specific thing what this is i don't know i'm not even sure if you're asking for a thing i think part of it might be just um you're having ritual. a conversation yeah having a conversation it yeah. might even be praising mm, yeah. Uh, worship um yeah yeah uh, but basically you're talking yeah you, you're having a conversation with a deity i believe so yeah so that's prayer Yes. Right. So we got the first one down. Mm -hmm. We got the second one down. Right. So we got faith. Right. And faith is just based off of trust. Right. It's you trust that this thing is what it is. Mm -hmm. Right. So I have faith in something. I am going to trust that this is a book. I have faith that this is a notebook and this notebook has paper in it. I can see it. I can touch it. I can rip it. I can do all sorts of things with it. Right. But then faith also means that I have I trust that there is a supernatural entity out there that is directing the things within my life as long as I adhere to whatever this entity's rules are. Right? Right. So that's faith. Second one is prayer. And in prayer, I'm going to say, is to ask or to beg someone or something for something. Right? But prayer is also the act of communicating with the deity. Right. So you're actually asking... Or you're begging some deity for something. Right. That's what happens when you're praying. Right? You're asking God. We haven't even gotten to the six articles of faith yet. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> we're not there. Yeah, but that'll be a that'll be a whole nother one. Right? Because we're just gonna go over these it five pillars. That's what you're talking about, but yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, so so we got these two down right now. Yeah. Right, we got the two. We got the faith and we got the prayer. Mm -hmm. Third one. Giving. Sakat. Sakat. Am I saying that right? I, yeah, I don't know because I don't speak Arabic. I don't either. Yeah, yeah, I don't even. Yeah, which means that I wouldn't even be able to translate or interpret the Quran because no. I don't speak Arabic. No. Yeah, 
God. It's a cut. Yeah. It's charity. It's giving. It's alms. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it's it's considered a necessary duty. So when I was on this website watching these uh, uh, YouTube videos, mm -hmm. you know, they give ads. Yeah. You know, you know, you have like 10 seconds. You can skip that or whatever. All the ads for these. Wine. Yeah, keep going. I'm listening. All the ads were for... Um, uh, donating to victims, uh, Muslim victims around the world okay. as part of your ritualized zakat. And it, in the actual ad, it says, you know, this is part of your zakat duty. Um, please give. Give what you can. It's like one of those, you know, when you, you're, you know, watching TV late at night, it's like be the children or save the children. Same kind of idea. But in the commercial itself, it says, you know, hey, this is part of your zakat. So please give. And it was, it was, uh, just incorporate it into the the commercial normal but yeah i'm actually but. thinking about that those dogs you know when the dogs are like looking super sad oh and, i can't watch that yeah i cry know. every time what and is this song? sarah mclaughlin's singing yeah yeah yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> the dog's got the sad face yeah won't you just please, please. just give one dollar yeah 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 okay so sagat 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 yes why did i say zagat? i don't know okay um, mm -hmm. so that's, uh, that's just something I noticed today, uh, just going through the, the websites and okay. then, um, the fourth is fasting. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, we're still on Sakat. Yeah. Okay. Sakat, because now I want to interpret it in my language because I have to define the words, okay. right? Because this is how I think, right? Is that I have to know what this word means, right? Because if you're going to Sakat, Right, which means that you're giving, right? So when I read it, the word that sticks out, the action, is give, right? So this is what you're doing. You are giving, right? And charity. Yeah, charity, giving, right? So to give, right? So to define give in the proper sense, it means that you're, you're being the cause or you're being the source of fill in the blank. You are the cause or you're the source of whatever it is that you're you're doing right yeah. so i just gave my time mm -hmm. right yeah that's what i'm doing i'm the cause i'm the source right i just gave my money right i just gave you my car right i just gave you my heart mm -hmm. i just gave you my fill in the blank mm -hmm. right i'm the cause i'm the origin of mm -hmm. this thing right here mm -hmm. me i'm the source mm -hmm. right that's to give mm -hmm. that's a pretty cool one and then the origin or the etymology of it it's sort of kind of the same thing because it's another middle english this is not latin mm -hmm. it's not latin right which is kind of cool <laughs> and it's not greek right but now to give is a middle english term right because why this is what happens when you speak english you're just a big melting pot of all these other languages um i can't even pronounce it but it's like yeve it's y-e-v-e -E. yeve right what'd you do i'm going to yeve something right <laughs> yeah <laughs> but what it what it means it, it it's like that that which is offered i am going to offer you something sure, right. right or i'm sure. going to i'm going to off, offer as tribute right you're still the source right right you're the cause or you're the source of something so to give something it just means that you set something off yeah i mean yeah. when you say you it, it starts from you you're the origin i think that that uh claims some responsibility in a yeah. sense too you're like i it's my responsibility again like i said duty-based ideology yeah. it's my responsibility to help my community help those yeah um, and i think that's a very human thing and that's one of the beautiful things i thought about mm -hmm. my pillars yeah. is that i don't care where you come from that idea be decent to one another like that's that's, yeah. Well, this one yeah, is actually this no is brainer. charity, though. What you were saying mm -hmm. from what the is it? What is it again? Zakat. Yeah, zakat. <laughs> yeah, the zakat um, is that you are giving money. Not necessarily money. No, just whatever you can. Yes. Okay, so yes. you're just giving whatever you can to your community. Charity. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. All I right. Mean, I don't care where you come from. That's how it should be. All right, so now we got faith, we got prayer, and we got giving, mm -hmm. right? So we got three. Mm -hmm. We got two more to go. Now we got to rock these last two out. So what's the third one again? Fasting. Is there a, an Arabic term for that? Um, 
This probably is. We probably just can't say it. Uh, so, mom, I don't. I can't read my writing. Mm. Well, maybe one day yeah. I'll go talk to one of my friends and <laughs> ask them. I could just Google it, but then Google might not be a hundred percent either, because it's Arabic. But it's one of those things that you're again duty based, where you're practicing some sort of discipline in reverence, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's it's exemplified by the month of Ramadan. And I, I'm not sure if there's other times there might be um, where fasting is necessary, but it is uh, the one month of Ramadan is considered extremely holy mm. and extremely important to adhere to that. So yeah. much so that what would we hear in the news the other day where some someone was maybe stoned to death because they partake partook uh, a little too soon before sun sundown and I can't even recall. It's, yeah, it's, it's just it, it, it's very important and very holy, and I guess inf infractions can be pretty serious. Yeah, that means that people will hurt you if you don't follow this rule. Yeah, but then yeah. I also learned today that there are some allowances for the sick yeah. and the traveling so it just depends on probably where you are how uh, stringent these rules are yeah okay well fasting i got it it's probably similar and straightforward you know abstaining from food mm -hmm. but then it gets to me it gets more interesting when i actually was looking at the the root of fast or fasting mm -hmm. because it's a, a german it's a, a early german term mm -hmm. And what it what it means is it just means to observe abstinence. You're just not you were just withholding from something. Mm -hmm. Right. But then if you track it down even more for mm -hmm. fast, right? Fast just means that I've just made I've just confirmed that I'm going to do something. Mm -hmm. I just made a pledge that I'm going to do something. Like that's why when you see when you hear people say, Hold fast I don't think anybody says that anymore. When you watch a movie <laughs> And then you hear somebody says, hold fast. Oh, yeah, like hold a pirate fast. ship that's about to hit yeah. a wave. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're just holding mm -hmm. your ground, mm -hmm. right? You've just made a pledge, mm -hmm. and then you just lock down on something like that. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know. Interesting. Yeah, know that's that. that's mm -hmm. fasting, right? Okay. When you're fasting, you've just confirmed it. You've just made a pledge. Yeah, okay. I yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Steadfast, hold fast. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's, there's a lot of conviction behind that. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we all, we all fast. We we fast from food every day. Mm -hmm. That's why we eat breakfast, <laughs> right? You know, breakfast. yeah, because you break your fast, of right? So it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, my first meal of the day, it's my breakfast. Mm -hmm. Oh, break fast. <laughs> break fast. Yeah, I just broke my fast so i'm going to eat yeah i just made a pledge to myself that i'm gonna sleep for three hours <laughs> and then i'm gonna eat my food okay cool all right feed me I boom like that. yeah so that's fasting right yeah so we got faith we got prayer we got giving and now we got fasting mm -hmm. right these are some like mm -hmm. conceptually these are some pretty cool, you know, rituals mm -hmm. that you you can follow. Mm -hmm. I think anybody can follow these, right? Wait till yeah. I get to my okay my application of yeah. these into a secular uh, lifestyle. All right. So what? Um, Last one is Hajj. Hajj. Pil pilgrimage. Pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm. it for those that can, it means going to Mecca. Okay. And performing the rituals. Okay. Again, very ritualized, duty-based ideology. Yeah. And this is a, uh, a tribute because it, it can be physically straining, um, but it's also supposed to be probably a very, probably the most spiritual experience a Muslim person can experience. Got it. Got it. Okay. The Hajj, the pilgrimage. It's probably like going to like a big uh, motivational camp or something. Yeah, the equivalent. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I broke it down for myself because mm -hmm. I'm kind of stupid. Because <laughs> I need to know what <laughs> I need to know what these words mean. So pilgrimage, in the modern sense, in the modern sense, 
pilgrimage is just a journey to a sacred place, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all it means in a mm -hmm. modern sense. And the individuals that go there, the base units that go there, they're called pilgrims, mm -hmm. right? So a pilgrim is the person that goes to a sacred place. Mm -hmm. But then when you start to look at um, the history and in the origin of where this word comes from, mm -hmm. it's actual a Hebrew word. And the Hebrew word is hajj. Whoa. Whoa. Wait a minute. The Hebrew word for pilgrimage in its origin is Hajj, right? H-A-G-H. -H. Oh. I might be spelling it wrong, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I might be spelling it wrong and I might be saying it wrong. But right? it's similar. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. But then, I mean, go figure from Abrahamic belief systems, right? You know, right. because Hebrew is the, the, the big granddaddy of all Abrahamic belief systems. So then the Hebrews said that they are going on a hajj in Hebrew just simply means a gathering, mm -hmm. right? You know, it's like, yo, come on, we're going to have a hajj, right? <laughs> at my flat. So what? All right, cool. Right. We're going to go gather up at your flat and hang <laughs> out and chill. What are we going to, what are we, we going to do? I don't know. We're going to play some video games or something like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know, but it's a gathering. <laughs> I don't know, okay. right? Because the term in itself means a gathering. A gathering just means that people are collectively Assemble. meeting at a place, sure. right? You know, so so that's what we got, okay. right? <laughs> so when I break down the five pillars in 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 my mind, mm -hmm. I think about I think about it in this this way, is that I have this feeling that there's a supernatural entity, right, that I can communicate with. And when I'm communicating with this supernatural entity, right, it's going to look down on me and it's going to wonder if I'm giving, if I'm being the source of something, right? If I am actually contributing to society, my society or whatever it is, right? But then also the supernatural entity wants me to make a pledge, Right. It wants me to confirm my allegiance, right, to this entity. Right. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it wants me to go and hang out and gather up with my buddies and my friends and you know, we go and we have our rituals and do <laughs> things like that. Right. And we walk around in circles. And we go and we touch an object. And then from this object that we touch, we have some form of connection, mm -hmm. right? Uh, some form of communication with it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so this supernatural entity, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I can communicate with mm -hmm. um, five times a day, mm -hmm. right? Which is kind of needy um, because I don't, I, I mean, to be in a relationship with someone like that, it's like you have yeah, to call them five yeah. times a day, <laughs> right? It's like you Yikes. want me to you want me to call you yes, you know, five times a day. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. You're kind of needy. <laughs> I don't know if I like you that much. Is to where it's like, yo, know, text me. He fucking text me five times a day, and I want you to text me at morning. <laughs> <laughs> right? I want you to text me when you wake up in the morning. Right? I want you to text me at lunchtime. Right, and in between the morning and the lunchtime, I want you to text me at your first break. This is right? like when I said God's an abusive boyfriend because he's like, "Love me or go to hell." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and and yeah, so there's still no disrespect, right? You know, because I have full disclosure, I am, I don't believe in non-rational things, right? Okay. So it doesn't mean that I. I don't believe that you believe what it is that you believe in, mm -hmm. right? You can believe what it is that you believe in, but this is how I run the story through Again, my head. Again, back to our anchor. The only yeah. thing we have control of is our own thoughts. Yeah, 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 yeah. And these are my thoughts. And these are your thoughts. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> so then I forgot where I was going with No, it. the yeah. needy five times a day. Yeah, that's yeah. a... That's a... Bah, that's a lot. Bah, text me five times a day. What? That's a lot. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad there's if this and that, and then I can program that shit in in the phone, and it can send out an automated text, right? I mean, could you imagine an automated prayer, right? 
Oh. Right? Yeah. Far better than after Oh, that. yeah. I mean, you can say that. What are you going to do? Well, I mean, you can probably do it to where you can remind yourself to pray. <laughs> I'm right? sure there's an app for that. Yeah, but then if you can do it, what if you can just send out an automated prayer? <laughs> right? And you say, okay, well. Send a lot of text messages. Yeah. I'm going to have a template. And then within this template, <laughs> right, it, it's just going to be a fix. It's that's my maybe, fixed thing. Maybe that's the point, though. Maybe the fact that it's it's so almost onerous to have to do this five times a day, but that's what, again, duty based. Yeah. That's proving your faith. That's proving your worth. Because when it's all said and done, and you want to go into paradise, yeah, I was the one that did it five times a day, every day, for the rest of my life. Yeah, I mean, because these are. Uh, it's a sacrifice, right? Yeah. Uh, this, this is showing your. It is that, but no, I. Uh, yeah, it she is. She said, I don't know if I like you enough to do this. That's what they're saying. I like you enough to do this because this is, this is tedious. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, no, I mean, no. I think that the, I think it, it is fundamentally at its root level, that is a good scheme, mm -hmm. right? To have faith, mm -hmm. to prayer, to give, to fast, and to go on a journey mm -hmm. or a pilgrimage. Um, I just burped twice. Um, <laughs> but if you do those things, and this is part of your, your belief system, yeah, that's cool. Right? You're having a pretty rad life. You're having a pretty rad life if you can, if you, if you have this supernatural entity that you can talk to, mm -hmm. right, that approves of you when you give things and you do good things to your community, mm -hmm. right, and that you pledge mm -hmm. your loyalty to, right, and you even go on a journey to replicate and reproduce the things that mm -hmm. your 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 ancestors did at the time. That's a pretty cool that's a pretty cool system. I mean, we'll get to this in another talk, but I was reading about the six articles of faith today and one of them is this idea of this judgment day, which Allah judges everybody. He judges uh, whether or not you get to go to the nice place or the bad place, basically. Mm -hmm. And he can't erase your sins. As far as I'm understanding this this uh, this system, but he can multiply your good deeds and then thereby outweighing your what? sins, and then you get to go into heaven. They got paradise. exponential growth. Yeah, 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 yeah. So adhering to these five pillars, being a, a good person, doing these good things, praying and do and giving alms and X, Y, and Z, those may be the things that um, can be multiplied. Your good deeds multiplied, hmm. thereby getting you uh, into Allah's good grace and into heaven. Yeah, the but more we'll that I look at this, time. yeah, I'm looking at this now, and I'm actually thinking about the Ten Commandments. Oh and, yeah, yeah, and then as I'm looking at it, it's like the first two, right? The first two, well, even the actual four of the five, are all external. Mm -hmm. Right, four of the five are all external, mm -hmm. meaning, well, no, actually, they're all internal, um, because you have faith, you pray. You fast and you go on a journey, right? So, first off, is that you believe the God's only external? Huh? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But then the only external one, it, that's an actual pretty good one, mm -hmm. right? So you still end up trying to, trying to have power, mm -hmm. but you're not really having power over your mind because you're asking someone mm -hmm. or something um, for you for assistance mm -hmm. or anything like that, right? And then you replicate things you replicate um other behaviors that other people have done within mm -hmm. the fasting and the pilgrimage right mm -hmm. but you know I, I guess you have to have these sandwich because i'm even thinking about the ten commandments and how you know like the first four were being obedient and obeying i just was redundant there right but obeying who god god is right in the Christian sense, yes. right? You know, so the first four in there, and then after that, it's yeah, obey your mom, obey your dad. You know, don't kill, don't steal, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it then it gets down into the community. So you, mm -hmm. I, I guess within these systems, you always have to have some sort of external baseline, which this external is really internal, mm -hmm. right? Because you're telling yourself, but in your mind, you're telling something external mm -hmm. that. Um, I believe mm -hmm. that there's something guiding me mm -hmm. that's above me, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I'm going to ask this person, this thing, mm -hmm. this entity to give me guidance or mm -hmm. do something like that. 
I'm going to give, I'm going to give something of myself to my community Mm -hmm. or to the people around me and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also going to pledge and I'm going to confirm this pledge Mm -hmm. by showing some form of sacrifice, right? I'm not going to eat. What? I'm not going to eat for like 14 hours. (laughs) Ha, got you. Right. So I'm not going to eat for like 14 hours, whatever. Right. You know, and then I'm also going to replicate and reproduce a journey. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm going to LARP it. Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Those aren't bad ideas. Because if you need if you need those four in order for you to do one, which means to give to your fellow human. Mm -hmm. uh, I can I can buy that. Mm hmm. Yeah, I can buy that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) As long as it doesn't cause anybody else harm. Anybody else harm. Yeah, that's the only way that I I can buy it. You can do all of these things as long as you do not cause anybody else harm. Sure. Yeah. That means no cutting hands off. (laughs) No cutting heads off. I can't imagine how any of these ideas would... It's it's ideas that that are that came after that that I think is what we're we're upset yeah. about. But these ideas are great, and I that's why I wanted to do my version of them. What's your version? Do you so, have a version? Yeah. So, <laughs> so again, like I can only only control my own ideas, right? Okay. And so, I I found these these to be pretty inspirational, and and I respect uh, kind of this ideology because. All in all, it's supposed to make one's life better. It's supposed to make one a better person. Um, I'm not Muslim, and so these these don't speak to me from that point of view. But what I took from them was a way of of using these to inspire a, a healthy life, right? Mm-hmm. So the first one is the central proclamation, and I think our central proclamation is that human beings deserve personal liberty, right? That's my central proclamation taking kind of just borrowing these ideas right Mm -hmm. um the second one of prayer is that uh i don't pray to a deity but i think there's a very important thing that we should do in our daily life of introspection whether it's meditation or journaling or just understanding your ideas understanding uh what you think about things learning about the world thinking on it um, discussing with other people, so it's more of a um, your your mental um, enrichment. Okay, mm, that's how, okay. what I think. The Z- zakat, that's that's a no brainer. Don't be a douche. Be a good person. Be nice to one another. Do things for people. Give to your community. That's I mean that that one's as straightforward as you can get. The fasting to me just just uh, represented what I want to put in my body, how I want to be healthy. Um, it, it it's it's all about about health. So so eating well, being fit, uh, being healthy, mm. fasting. It's a way of controlling, disciplining one's body, but mm. in a good way for okay. health. Okay. And then the Hajj is is a personal pro- pilgrimage. If you have a goal or a challenge, what are you going to do to get there? What's your quote unquote hero's journey? What's going to transform you into the person that you want to be? Or what experiences have you had that have made you who you are because you've decided to take those experiences and make them uh, work for you um, in a positive way? Hmm. So that's what I took from the five pillars. And yeah. a way to apply them, a non-Muslim woman, <laughs> into uh, something that I respect and something that I could use in my own life. Okay. All right. That's a good one. Well, yeah, I don't know. These are just five basic acts. These are the five basic acts, and basically they're just ways of thinking. (laughs) So these are the habits, and habits, that's just how you think. So these are just different forms that you can think, but we have to understand and we have to know that these are mandatory These are mandatory beliefs for all Sunni Muslims, right? For both. 
Yeah. Mm, yes, for yeah, both. The but... the Shi'i will have a couple extra ones called mm -hmm. the Ten Practices, but they. But these are the base. But these encompass the yeah. five. Yeah, these are the base. Yeah. Yeah. So the faith, the prayer, the giving, the fasting, and the pilgrimage, mm -hmm. which you can apply probably across the board to everyone, mm -hmm. and you can. Mm, you can manipulate them to however it is that you want, which you should. You should. You should be able to manipulate all of these like as you should because Christians do it and the Hebrews do it because the Hebrews were the ones that first originated all of this stuff, right? They were the ones. Um, and yeah, if you don't believe me, just go Google that <laughs> shit and go down the rabbit hole and just start looking, looking up um the the hebrew belief system or the abrahamic religions and blah 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 you can go down that rabbit hole but but just know that they all are basically coming from they should be coming from places that are that are kind and they just want to basically protect their community i guess now we just got to figure out how we can get along mm -hmm. and uh we also need to figure out how they how can we um incorporate communicate talk and share information with uh, um, radical mm -hmm. Muslims, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, they need to become part of the, the, the greater part of humanity. And they need to start, not start, but they need to stop thinking that they are better than everyone else. They need to start thinking that they are just another member of this family called humanity mm -hmm. right this is probably what they need to start thinking yeah well i don't it's know take some work yeah it's yeah. gonna take some work but yeah. yep it starts it starts here it starts, it here. starts with the we're individual under, we're, we're, yeah we're making a point to understand mm -hmm. that's the first step yeah all right well i guess on that note um <laughs> Yeah, it's time to tap out because, yeah, we got the five the five pillars down. We crushed it. Um, <laughs> the show notes, they're probably going to be in the bottom. Um, but also remember, this is part of uh, um, uh, a series of understanding Islam or understanding the core tenets of Islam in order for us to understand Islamism, mm -hmm. right? Because Islamism is actually feeding off of these, these systems, right? Mm -hmm. These words and these beliefs, right? You know, they're sure. feeding off of this, but they're feeding off of it in a negative or in a very dark way, right? right? Um, and that's not cool. And everybody, moderates, I forgot. <laughs> yeah everybody needs, there's a spectrum yeah. right and the, and the majority of people want to live in a community together where we're all enriched and so I, we need to understand each other so we can understand how to not allow uh, extremists to take away our own uh, way of life and personal liberties yep because it's happening slowly but uh, <laughs> close out not my house not in my house yeah not my house <laughs> Yeah, just remember that, is that uh, you have power over your mind. You don't have power over outside events. Once you realize this, you will find strength. Mm -hmm. And that was written by a dude a very, very, very long time ago, right? Before Jesus Christ, before Muhammad, right? Before Noah, <laughs> right? Yeah, before all of these people that it seems like that we're all getting up in arms about right now. Um, so yeah, just just remember that is that we have complete control over our minds and how we think and how we act. And once we we drill that down, yeah, we can become um, pretty good communicators. We can think and act together as a community. Yeah, finding that strength. All right, well, okay. time to tap out. <laughs>